YouTube, what is good? Welcome to the video. So this is my temporary studio for the day. Based on the views on the last video, nobody really cares about my studio or where I record these things. But if you watched that video, shout out to you. You know I got rid of my old home studio and now I'm building a new one and it's in the process of being completed. So we're out here today. But today we're doing a photography behind the scenes. It's a photography behind the scenes I'm very excited about because it shows the true progression of a night of photography and what really goes into getting an image that I'm happy with that I want to post on social media that I could eventually use for a book or a gallery or something like that. A real image that I'm proud of. It's not always an easy process and today's video is going to show that and break it down. So yesterday I got out to shoot for about two hours and like 15 minutes, two hours and 20 minutes and I started to shoot at a time of day where I'm not as good. I struggle a little bit at kind of like a sunset golden hour type time. And then the shoot rolled into when it actually got dark, which is a time of day I'm more comfortable with. And in today's video, we have about 25 or 26 example photos where I show you exactly why I don't like them, why they're trash, why they're not good. And you get to see how all these trash photos lead us to the best photo of the day, the photo that I really love, that I'm happy with, that is currently posted to my Instagram at Evan Ramp, so you can check that out there when the video is done. But yeah, that's what today is. It's a real life example of the creative process behind photography and how a bunch of crappy photos lead you to that one great photo. So I'm not gonna waste your time anymore. Let's get into it. If you've never seen one of my photography behind the scenes videos, I wear a GoPro on the top of my camera. Today we're shooting with the Leica QP. And if you enjoy the video, do me a solid, hit that thumbs up, subscribe if you're not yet. Let's get into it, photography behind the scenes. So pretty much we get started right away. I noticed this mirror reflecting wall right here with these nice lead lines. So I just wait here for a minute, wait for a subject or something interesting to happen inside of this scene. We get this person walking through, looks like they're on their way home from work. Eh, not great. The lead lines are cool. They're pointing technically towards the subject, but there's just not enough going on. And then this one, there's too much of a gap. So eh. Not very good. I move on up the street. Notice these people to the left. They're about to start smoking some cigarettes. So I wait for them to cross the street. Get this image right here of them crossing through the intersection. Eh, too much space on both sides of the photo on the left and the right. Maybe if I cropped it as a square, it would be okay. And there's also too many other people. And I was hoping that they'd be smoking and smoke would be coming into the air. I thought it'd be a little bit more interesting. It was not. So I continue up the street. Y'all see that little billboard right there for that Long Money album? Not bad, but I look off to my left and notice this glowy, nice, warm light kind of down on the horizon, so I walk in that direction. Along the way, see this person running through this frame. I captured it at the worst time possible. The subject needed to be either on the left or the right inside of those door frames, right in the middle, didn't work. So I walk towards where this warm light is. I try a few things right here, mess around with that fence, try to shoot down this street. Notice these shadows on the wall that look pretty cool, but there's just way too much negative space, not enough going on. I love this light, I love the colors. I take this photo of my hand to just give you an example of what the light was like. I really hoped a subject would just walk in front of me or something would happen to create something happening inside of this light, but unfortunately nothing did. Keep going down the street, make this terrible photo through this fence. It's just not good, too much negative space going on. Find this puddle down here, try again for some type of puddle reflection flip image thing. It's cool, I actually really like it, but a subject, nothing interesting ever happened inside the scene, just that car which looked terrible. I tried the puddle again here, and just this one definitely is not working. Too many shadows, not enough dynamic light. Our subject is completely lost in the backdrop. It just, it just doesn't look good. So moving on down the street, notice this person waving this flag over here. It's like a parking attendant. The mural behind him is by Hence. It's a really awesome mural, so I thought it'd be kind of cool to get something with the cars moving and the flag waving with the mural. Not happening. I walk past this parking garage. There's a lot of really cool windows, a lot of interesting framing opportunities here. So I try to frame up a photo of that Ferris wheel composition again, but through the bars, once again, terrible. Just too much negative space. This composition was not working today. Try another shot where I have someone walking through the window just from farther back. Once again, not working. It might have worked if there were two silhouettes, one in each window, but just not good. Try something here with the gated window trying to shoot through it. It just wasn't working out. Shooting during the day is very tough for me. I don't know what it is. Make this image. I don't even know what I'm doing. It's not 
good either. I purposely started this shoot when it was light out because I knew it's something I'm not super comfortable with. It's not when I typically like to make photos and I wanted to try to challenge myself to find some good light. Proved to be exactly what I thought it would be a big challenge, but I'm up for it. At this point, it does start to get darker though, which is where I'm much more comfortable. Notice this composition here where people are walking into the train station. It could be so much better if there was a third piece of interest in the photo to create a triangle, but it's not good. Move down into the subway. Now, this is an idea that I've had for quite some time, decide tonight's a good time to try it out while I'm waiting for it to get fully dark out. Go to the bottom of the stairs and I just wait for someone to go up the escalator. And I make this image right here, it's a black and white photo and it looks cool, but the problem with this image is the lead lines that make this location so interesting aren't pointing to the subject. They're going past the subject, so it creates a little bit of confusion for you as the viewer. So as I ride back up the escalator, I do a few more photos that are kind of tests to show you exactly what I'm thinking and what I'm talking about. I'm gonna have to come back and try this again. With this composition right here, all of our lead lines point to the center of the image. So if we have a subject going up the escalator, it's gonna be very clear and readable. Same thing with this composition right here. The lights, all the lines point to a center apex point making it a very readable, clean image. So I'm definitely gonna have to come back here and try to make this photo possible. I might cheat on this one and bring Chris with me and use him as like the silhouette at the top of the escalator just cause it's uh, definitely a time consuming composition to say the least. So now that it's finally dark out, this is where I really feel the most comfortable and where I think I can make the best photos. So I move down the street, notice this person walking through our frame, they're kinda in a suit. They have a lot of action here, they're basically running across the street, but there's just not enough going on on the left and right side of the image. There needs to be something more interesting here. Maybe if I had a set of photos of all business people in suits or something like that, this photo would work, but by itself, it's just a little bit too boring. So I move on down Peachtree Street. There's a lot of good light across the street and I was hoping to silhouette some people or some cars or get some car motion. So I set my camera down on this ledge to try to do a long exposure. Doesn't work across the street. You can see these silhouettes in the light. That would have been cool across the street. I see this window that's lit up. I wait for someone to cross in front of it. The scooter in the bottom of the photo could have been removed and I don't know, maybe I could have been a little bit closer because I did have a 28 millimeter. It was pretty tough, uh, especially being on the other side of the street. So I don't know. I kind of do wish I had something like a 50 or a zoom for a shot like this. I think it would have been a little bit more interesting. But we continue on down the street. I always love this light up ahead. The problem with it though, it's made by a Hooters sign. Not super interesting for a photo. Uh, you can see across the street, I had never seen Peachtree Center lit up like this before ever since they remodeled it. Uh, these like beams with light are crazy. I think they're lit up for breast cancer awareness. Had my camera set up for a long exposure, it looked terrible. Have someone cross right here in front of the frame, another kind of business suit looking person. The composition is just way too messy though. Had it worked out, it might have paired up nicely with that other suit photo from earlier, but there's just too much crap going on here. The color is off too because there was a blue screen behind me. Not a good photo at all. So I know I'm onto something with these lights, so I cross the street and try a different composition. I didn't realize this pool thing was here. I wait and wait and wait. I knew this was the shot. I just had to wait for the right subject or person to enter into our frame to complete the composition position and we make this photo right here. This has everything I wanted on the night. Oh, it's crazy. The lighting, the colors, the edit on this took forever because there was so much light going on, all these different colors. I really had to balance them out in post to get this nice blend of pinks, purples, blue, a little bit of blue, and then these oranges, really making that subject pop out. Oh man, this has everything. The lead lines, it looks like something from Blade Runner. It's really futuristic. It has everything that I could ask for with a photo. So my settings on this one were ISO 1600, 1 80th of a second and f2.8. I felt pretty comfortable at 1 80th of a second handheld using the Leica Q. Had my shutter speed needed to be like 1 50th or 1 40th or anything like that, I would have dropped my aperture down to maybe f2, maybe even f1.8. We would have gotten a little bit of light diffraction in there, but it would have ensured that our shutter speed could be high enough to get a nice sharp image. From here, I'm feeling really good. I want to keep making photos, so I take kind of a long route 
back to the car. I'm constantly just looking around, seeing if anything is interesting happening. And I noticed this car pulling out of this parking deck. Now, it's not the most interesting photo ever, but I love this blue light coming out of the deck. It kind of adds to this futuristic feel of the night and sort of fits the other image that we made because there are a lot of lead lines in this photo. What I wish was, I wish I was a little bit closer. I'm kind of far away being on the other side of the street shooting at 28 millimeter, kind of like one of those photos earlier. So this one, I don't know. I might be able to crop it to really isolate the point of interest in the photo, but I think it would have been better had I been on the other side of the street. This is another location that we might have to come back to down the line. I got some ideas for this for sure. And to close out the night, the last photo that I try to make is this one right here. We have this empty parking lot with this single light spotlight. We have a lead line from this like tunnel orange light thing here. Could have been cool, but I think if it was to have that mysterious movie cinema vibe that I saw in my head, the subject or person or car or whatever needs to be isolated in that light as opposed to right next to the parking meter thing like they are in this image so definitely something here it just didn't work right now so that was the night a lot of photos were made probably about 300 250 photos and i really only left with one that i liked that i was happy with but that is the name of the game right there that is why i love photography i love this pursuit to make images that i'm proud of and there we go, that is it for today's photography behind the scenes. Yo, this Leica QP might be my favorite camera that I've ever used in my life, but we'll talk about that in another video. I hope you can take everything in today's video and apply it to your own photography, use it as inspiration and also reassurance that sometimes the process isn't pretty. It takes a lot of bad photos to get to that one photo that you truly love and that you're happy with. But it felt great to get out there and make this video for y'all. So thank you very much for watching. If you enjoy it, like I said, hit that thumbs up. Subscribe for more photography videos, y'all the truth and I will catch you next time.